Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph and I built a trailer. <laughs> now you may be wondering, why do you need a trailer? Well, mom and I have been wanting to haul full 4x8 sheets of plywood from the hardware store forever. And now we can finally do it because this Harbor Freight trailer is actually fully 4x8. So we'll be able to hold um, our lumber perfectly on here. Now we've been wanting to get a trailer for a long time, but the biggest thing holding us up was where are we gonna put the trailer when we're not using it? So when we found out that you could get a trailer that folds, that was a game changer. And I'll say I've never built a trailer before, never done car work, so I'm a very beginner. I did a lot of research online, watched a lot of videos, and so I'm gonna share everything I learned about doing this. Um, and I also have a, a car guy friend named Steven who actually has one of these trailers. He's had it for 10 years, and so he was able to answer a lot of my questions throughout the, throughout the process and help me troubleshoot some stuff uh, we had with the wiring so I'll share all of that with you in this video and some upcoming videos and I'll put a link to a playlist that will have all the videos that we do about this trailer for you all right so let's get assembling here are all the parts of the Harbor Freight trailer make sure you have plenty of space to assemble this and room to flip it over as you progress through the steps when you buy the trailer it comes in two boxes one with the frame and the other with the wheel parts this is the trailer we're assembling today Harbor Freight sells a few different trailers, but we went with the one that's just over a thousand pounds capacity as it will be plenty for hauling lumber. Before I got started, I read the manual a few times and watched a few different YouTube videos on the subject. Then I organized all the screws and parts. Take note that there are two taller screws, so make sure you put those aside with the other oddball screws. The manual is pretty straightforward with the frame assembly. One note, each part is numbered in the manual, so I actually added those numbers with a sticky note to each of the parts to make sure nothing got out of place. I laid everything out, then started to add the screws. The majority of the screws are 17 millimeters. I used a socket wrench and a wrench to tighten them all down. I would recommend adding all the screws loose first, then tightening everything. But you want to make sure everything is square before you tighten it. Check and recheck to make sure this is right. The pictures in the manual are a little hard to interpret sometimes, so just double check everything before you move on. A few notes here, the bolt for the middle rails go through the silver bracket and then into the rail. And make sure you put the hinges in the right direction as one side is more raised than the other. And also note that one of the bolts goes through the hinge and then that also secures the rail. To secure the bottom bolts, I actually had to raise the trailer just a little bit and I used whatever I had around the workshop. Most of the time we were using Rockler bench cookies, which we use a lot when we're woodworking. This is the front of the trailer. Next I attach the tongue assembly, which is what attaches the trailer to your car. Take note of the tow bar with the writing on it and make sure you don't put that upside down. This is a close-up of the hardware that I just attached. The L-latches are actually used because they will be removed each time you fold the trailer. Everything else here is pretty straightforward. Again, you'll need to raise the trailer to tighten the bolts. Now it's time to assemble the rear bed rail. I put everything in place with loose bolts, then secured everything down. Next, I connected the two parts together. The two bolts in the middle will need to be removed each time the trailer is folded. Here's a close-up of the rails that I numbered based on the numbering system in the manual. With the structure assembled, it's time to flip it over and work on the wheels. And here's a quick close-up of those hinges. This is how the trailer is able to fold for storage. 
We thought it would be a challenge to flip ourselves, but it really was not at all. Flipping it on its side made it really easy. The next step is to assemble the spring hanger slash caster assembly. A big note here, remember, this has been flipped, so left is right and right is left. Being dyslexic, this stumped me for a few moments until I added some sticky notes as a reminder. Once you get right and left correct, it's pretty straightforward. This is the step where you use the longer bolts and two carriage bolts. Also, take note of where the carriage bolts go as those will need to be removed each time you fold the trailer. All these use the 17 millimeter socket. You're gonna need more height in order to put the caster assemblies in place. We had a couple of center blocks that were a good height, so we placed the trailer on top of those with some microfiber cloth in between to help protect the trailer finish. To attach the casters, the nuts use a 14 millimeter wrench. This was a bit tricky, but I found if I held the caster in place with needle nose pliers, mom could tighten the nut. Then these attach with the regular 17 millimeter bolts. Next is the fender assembly. A big note here is in this picture, you can see the holes are closer to one side than on the other side. So the fender bracket should face towards the closer side. The springs get placed next and the axle on top of those. The U-bolt secure the axle in place. This is a little tricky to get, so make sure you use the shortest socket you have. I tightened everything up once it was in place and then moved on to prepping the wheels. There's a dust cap on the front of the wheels that needs to be removed. We stuck a metal rod through the back side to pop out the dust cap from the front. Then we removed the hub assembly from the wheel. I didn't have a metric socket big enough, but I used a 13 16 socket and that worked. I'm going to pause here and share one note. I've seen some conflicting information about the grease that comes on the bearings on these wheels. Some say that this is shipping grease and must be fully removed and new grease added. Some say this is sufficient grease for these bearings. The manual makes it sound like this grease is sufficient and I double checked with Steven and he said this looked correct. So I didn't add any extra grease but the manual does mention how to repack the bearings when that's necessary. And this is the hub assembly. The manual does mention adding grease to the back side of the hub, which I'm doing here, and then it just slips onto the axle. And you'll need to give it a little push here to get it into place. Then a flat washer goes into place, screw the castle nuts tightly onto each spindle, then back the castle nut off slightly so the hub can move freely. Insert a cotter pin through the castle nut. I watched a few videos on this and found out that you want to have the long end of the cotter pin facing up and get it securely in place and then bend the cotter pin around the front of the spindle. The other end can be pushed back a tiny bit and the dust cap can go back in place. I placed the tire back on the hub assembly and hand tightened the lug nuts and the manual states the lug nuts need to be torqued to 85 to 90 feet pounds. Okay, so I had no idea what that meant, but I talked to Steven and he informed me that I need a torque wrench, which I borrowed from him, and a torque wrench has a dial on it so you can actually set the exact feet pounds that you need, and it will click once you've reached that when you're tightening the lug nuts. I watched many videos on this and know what the click's supposed to sound like, but I'll tell you I was never actually able to hear that when I was tightening the lug nuts. I tightened them as much as I could and could not tighten them any farther. My dad even tried and he couldn't tighten them any farther. So hopefully you'll have some better success with a torque wrench. Um, I did run this by Steven and he said if I couldn't tighten them anymore then they were probably pretty well set. Next it was time to turn the trailer back over. We enlisted the help of my dad this time as the trailer has been getting heavier and heavier with each step. And we found it was not a huge deal to flip it over and guess what? It rolls! <laughs> So here is the trailer. We happened to find our Gorilla ladder stools were the perfect height to hold the tongue upright. And lastly, we just needed to add the coupler and chain, and this was very straightforward. The front screw is where the chain gets added, and that is how it's secured to the trailer.
what we learned. Now I'm saying we because mom did, uh, she didn't help too much, but she helped um, when I needed it and she was moral support. So mom was definitely part of the process of this trailer. Uh, but I wanted to share a quick story of how we even found this trailer and how we even figured out that Harbor Freight sells trailers. Uh, so I have a friend named Beth. I actually host a, a podcast with her and I'll put a link to that below. Uh, but we, I was in her garage for like two minutes. We were on our way somewhere and I was in her car, in her garage. And um, whenever I'm in a garage, I like love to look at stuff in garages. And I saw this big kind of red thing in the corner. And I, when she came back, I said, what is that? And she said, oh, that's, uh, that's my husband's folding trailer. And I was like, folding? Folding? You can get a trailer that folds? Um, and so that got my mind going and I started looking it up. Under $400, I was just so impressed. And the reason why I was like, this is the trailer for us is because three years ago, we bought mom's um, Honda CRV and we actually got a hitch installed because we knew we wanted to get a trailer, but we couldn't find anything reasonably priced. And also our biggest problem was, where do you put a trailer? They're so big. And we didn't want to have one in the backyard always sitting there. And so when we realized that you could get a trailer that folds, we were sold. And the price, I mean, you could not beat that price. Now we've assembled the trailer in this first video, but next we're gonna talk about uh, the tag, registering your trailer, how to buy it. There's there's more involved than, uh, than just assembling. So that will be in a whole nother video. And then we'll get onto the wiring stuff. And I will say the wiring took me the longest because there was an issue. We figured it out and it was a grounding issue, uh, a little hint there. So uh, we'll do all of that in upcoming videos. We'll talk about installing the plywood bed and also hooking up to the car. And also we'll talk about how it folds because you're probably wondering, I want to see it fold. So we will uh, share all of that upcoming. Prep work is key, so make sure you have all the tools and materials you need ahead of time and that will really save you a lot of time. So we'll put a link on, on our website to all of the tools and the things that I would have gotten ahead of time if I knew, knew now. Um, all the extra things that I think would uh, make this a quicker, easier project to do. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you are getting this trailer or have this trailer, let us know in the comments. Um, we're excited to be able to use this and to store this for, um, for all our future endeavors. So thanks for joining us. If you want to see more projects from us, be sure to visit us at motherdaughterprojects.com and hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube and click the bell and you'll be notified of all our new videos. Thanks.